investigator, and he's uh, what he has is he has access to some uh, databases that normal people cannot get access to, and he's actually developed a software program that does cross-referencing of databases based on the database we provide them, and it starts to tell you as to where people say they live, and it starts matching up names and addresses, and it goes through a verification process, and it goes through, uh, it gives you a, lit, a first list of no matches, and then what he does is he requires uh, for us to give for, uh, date, dates of birth uh, for parents that he can narrow down those matches, because there are things that are common that don't match, common names and things of that nature, uh, Smith, Jones, uh, in our community. So you wanted the date of birth of a parent? Yes, yeah, so and we can get it off of certain records that we have that he'll be able to then verify more uh, finite. What he has found is that first time through, he gets about a 1% no match. And then from there, after the no match, sometimes he gets almost as high as half of a percent for us, which would be about 30 students. He's saying that's what he's finding as the norm. Um, he also does. Um, if you need to, he, he can do an ex extensive search into other classifications. If there are uh, some instances where you feel you have a higher uh, rate of people trying to come into your community, he can narrow in on those also um, and do some more uh, finite work. Uh, the proposal that when you spoke to him, Mr. McInerney, of $2 per was if you did over 5,000 students. If the number is under 5,000, it's a higher rate. Obviously, the bigger the database, the easier to run and things of that nature. Uh, unfortunately, I was, I'm waiting on his proposal so that I can bring it back to the board, but it's roughly about $2 if you do 5,000. Uh, if his numbers and what his findings are, if we find 30 students, and if out of those 30, I mean, is there a direct $10,000 savings for every student? I can't say that. But at least it's not, start, but it does reduce class. It does reduce your class size, and it may help in some other areas where you may have some some situations that you want to look at that he can help. Do when he says he narrows it down to thirty, let's say uh, half a percent or whatever, <coughs> of that thirty, how many are valid uh, illegal? Legal? That's what he said. When he's done, he he his findings have been that it's almost a half a percent of your population of thirty students, up to six thousand students. That, that, that's more than I would imagine. Yeah. And I, I was surprised at those numbers also, uh, but he said that's what his, uh, his, his findings have been doing this uh, in the state of New Jersey. Uh, obviously, when you're, close, when you're in other districts that may border some urban communities, Abbott District, your rates are probably higher. Uh, I'm not sure how much of that would influence here, but... I, I, think, I, think, the, I think the biggest impact is on full-day kindergarten. And I would, I would venture to say that you would find 10, 15, without a doubt. Uh, and, and, and then you have the collateral damage aspect of it, because once the word is out that residency checks are being done, people get in court, then you can see numbers reduced. Yep. And this is real simple internally. If I did a study of who's in kindergarten right now versus who comes back to first grade in September, I bet you those numbers don't match. And that, to me, and I'm not even one of these private detectives, um, can tell you that that's an issue. I, I don't know. That's I, well, let me ask you a question, because I know this has always been a concern here. If he finds a student and he says they don't match, and that student has on record this domicile agreement, this affidavit, like how does that work? Which well, seems that's, to be that's what where, problem's always been uh, here. At that point in time, once he identifies the 30, he, he turns it over to the school district, and then it becomes upon us to do the paid labor at that point if we wish to then do all the true verification process. He may come up with the match, and uh, Ms. Zeichner might have in her office some letter that indicates the child is domiciled here from some other means other than the direct match. You also have issues where parents are separated or divorced. Right. So the father may be domiciled in another district, but the mother is the one uh, that stayed and has the children here. And the father, through the records, took all the mail and had it delivered to him, and the mother's not receiving any mail. You know, he gave me some of those instances that he found that are inconsistencies that you then have to manually check. So he, there is adding a third, you start verifying those. Uh, that's an added service if you wish for him to do it. 
uh, we have a truancy officer or our, our investigator that can go out and then start verifying those kind of things if you move in that, that, that direction. I think it's worth it that we investigate it further. Um, let him give us a proposal, and I, I think um, even if we spent ten thousand dollars on this, I think that's money well invested. I, I agree. Uh, and, you know, I don't think it's a big investment to find out where your uh, true residency issues are if you have them. But we do send out now residency checks. How many of those do we send out a year? I just started this job, so oh, I'm sorry. not sure how many okay. we've done in the past. But I mean, I, I know we keep them pretty busy. I mean, he's out yeah. there checking. The schools call him. We're not doing fast. No, 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 but didn't, I remember we had this issue in the summer. I remember calling you because I got actually complaints from parents that they had to come in and prove they were residents, their kids so were seniors we in the high school. We and how do you do that? Yeah, there's a Phyllis, I can tell you being closer yeah. to it than Marilyn. Normally, believe it or not, the way we find out of most of our residency issues is through transportation. Uh, you'd be surprised. That's how we find so out. So I'm just looking for our general process. I know we said, well, I know there were people Most that of it is based on someone coming forward saying they know, they see a car with New York license plates dropping off kids at a bus stop. Well, I know people who got those letters yeah. in the summer. I know teachers that work yeah. at this school that got yeah. them and they live here. Like, how were they chosen? How did that work? Was it a random thing? I mean, I, I can't imagine those people no. were... I, mean, I have a neighbor down the street. This was her fourth child in the district that got a letter. So the, that is not random over the summer. Basically, the, they go through the records, and everyone is supposed to have all this paperwork. Okay, on so file. it's a paperwork. Right, it so might have been just paperwork. paperwork. Issue. Paper. And, and yeah. when they were going through the files, and they realized that they didn't have the paperwork. So do they check those records every year? Every record is checked every year for paperwork. Theoretically, yes. Okay. Yes. okay. But you know, and, but we get we get information. We get anonymous phone calls. Right. Okay. Um, we get all kinds. I think the biggest one is that we hear is someone will say we saw a car pull up to the bus stop with New York license plates. But we do do something. It's not as oh, yeah, we don't do anything. No, once we get the, that information, we then turn turn it over to the investigator and he does it. I know some districts offer rewards that if you identify someone that turns out to be. If you look in this brochure, that indicates that. You can put up posters there, like um, private uh, tip lines that you can go through. It's just my feeling that, as, as board members, this is something that we ought to do. I think we're responsible to do it. And if there's not a direct money savings, because now the class has 22 versus 24, yeah, you're not going to save $20,000, but you free the class of two kindergarten students. And I think once that word gets out, I think I think that's our responsibility to do. You know, we talk about you know spending sixty, eighty thousand dollars to fix a, a, a baseball field. I think spending ten thousand dollars to determine who's coming to our school uh, that should be paying tuition is a no-brainer for me. Yeah, and that's the other thing. You, depending on how these kids are here, you might be able to get tuition reimbursement from the district they were born to. Yeah, and, and we've been victims of that, if yeah. I recall, in the past, where districts have hit us up. Um, I, I think this solves a lot of our budget problems. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and Marilyn, how? Do you know like how many students say this year, or do you have any idea? You know, I, ha, are there any? Oh, th uh, there are definitely some. I mean, I know I was involved in a case at one of the elementary schools where we got word that there were three children three in the children. school, three children that mom, they were living with mom in Old Bridge, and dad was maybe living here in Sayre, but we weren't real sure. Mm -hmm. And repeatedly, we sent out Mr. Marcin sick to check on things and to go. And um, they fought, they finally left, I think, mm -hmm. last week. So you know, that was three students in one, one family. One family, yes. And then I have another yeah, normally one. Normally your point is that it's more than one that yes. they're, they're going to move in. Yeah, they, they, there have been numerous ones. Um, I'd say that I've been, a lot of them don't even come directly to me. The schools just call him up. I got a phone call from another elementary school today that they have two kids that they understand are not living where they claim they are. So they were they were calling Mr. Martinsic themselves today and they said they'd keep me informed. So now we, we do So we seem to be on top of it. I, I think so. I mean we right, but we it's strictly based that, on tips. Yes. Do you feel that we need this service if we're on top of it? Can you recommend it? I, I, I do what do you feel? Do we really need it if we're on top of it? Honestly, like I said, I've only been doing this job for about two months, so right. I'm really I don't think it hurts. I mean, I think depending on the cost, it, it's worth a try. Certainly, the more avenues we pursue, you know. Right, and I like Mike's idea. 
thinking about the kinder, especially the kindergarten, but the elementary school. And so we'll find out what kind of price he comes back at. Well, I can tell you generally said it's over five thousand it's two dollars per right, per student or per name. Only a thousand. Right right now our book of knowledge tells us there's five thousand nine hundred and seventy seven students registered. I believe we're up to nine thousand. Well the October fifteenth count had five thousand nine hundred and ninety four. Okay. <laughs> so round it off to six thousand. Well, six oh, thousand. Yeah. So where one do we one half of a percent that's a lot of kids. Mike, yeah. Mike you bought this? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. So it was you'll interesting. Bring back prices at the next meeting, yeah. I take it. Well, I was hopeful to have him for tonight. I just didn't receive. I mean, it was it was interesting to understand his, his process because he really got in. He's actually a private, a licensed private investigator that saw an avenue to make uh, an extra living. Nobody's going to shoot at him. Hey, if he finds thirty kids, I recommend. Sure it's <laughs> but we'll see how much it costs. Thank you. Thank you for your. Your due diligence, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Indian cultural events. Dr. Alfano. Um, I'm hoping this is relatively easy. Yeah. Uh, Phyllis and I, Phyllis and I were discussing this. <laughs> I don't think so. This is one of the large, <laughs> this is one of the largest, largest events that anybody's asked us to do. It's between 800 and 1,000 that are going to come into the high school. And they pretty much want to have, they pretty much want to use every nook and cranny of the high school. Um, I asked Jim, you know, whether or not he had a little bit of a reservation. He did. I'm, you know, I'm a little concerned about it because of the amount of people, parking, everything. I mean, it's, it, it is, it, it will get kind of crazy there. Um, it's not until June, um, but I'm looking for some direction. Uh, Phyllis and I uh, talked about. Possibly, if we allow this, which I have a tendency to agree to, because they are very good in the sense that if they break something, they fix it. I mean, I mean, and, and they and they you know they, they do their thing and they leave. I mean, they don't they don't destroy the place. But when you have that many bodies, you know, my concern is is that you know, of the facility. This is a brand new facility. You have the auditorium. You have the gymnasium. You have the cafeteria. My assumption is I'm going to use all those areas, and uh, I think we, we um, should possibly think about that they bring in security or a police officer. Uh, they, they pay for custodians. They don't, they're, they're good like that. It's not about they have all the proper insurance. It's not like they walk in here and don't have the insurance. Um, I'm just looking for direction. How much is the facility fees? Um, Joe, Joe was out, uh, but the facility fees are substantial. I mean, I could get you that number, but they pay uh, they pay quite a bit of money to use the facility. And they've used it before, this group, not they, that number. Right? They, they've never been a problem. Right. I mean, I'm not saying they're a problem. It's just it's a bigger it's a bigger affair. It's 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 a Saturday. It's at the I believe it's like the it's at the school zone. It's like the 20th. I don't have our policy in front of us, um, but. Mandate that they have a higher uh, police officer. Well, we don't. We don't have to approve it. We can just say that they have to. My you biggest know. concern here was uh, actually the auditorium. Uh, we just spent a lot of money to fix it. Um, if they came in here and they broke a table, you you could make them pay and and replace it. it. The auditorium, I think, would be a little bit more difficult if they ruined if they ruined the carpeting. What do you do? Do you rip up the whole place and ask them to put in new carpeting? Um, so uh, well, we have a bigger concern with the auditorium. We could with the rest make of that off limits. I mean, we could say, to them, look, you could use the facility, but you can't use the auditorium. Yeah. Block yeah, it. But, but then we have to have that consistently from anybody who wants to use the auditorium. That's my concern. And we've talked about this many years in the past. Right. That we're fair to everybody. If the auditorium is off, these events is off everybody, and not just certain groups because we're concerned. Yeah, that, that's my concern. Um, I don't. I don't think anybody really uses the auditorium to begin with. It's rare. I think they say for awards. Like yes, said. they want. It. Look, they use it for all the right reasons. They're not. Yeah, they go to the cafeteria because they're going to eat. They go to the auditorium because they want to give awards. You know, I mean, they, they, you know, they, I don't know you if they're playing basketball in the gym, but they use it. Students are involved in this as well. Right. Yeah. This is a big community event. And is it? Is it mostly sayable residents? I, I don't. Honestly, I think so, but I don't know the actual configure. I don't know. I, I don't have the actual breakdown. Like that's, that's they'll say they'll say yes, and I, and I have a tendency to agree that it is many of, of the percentage is large. You know, I, I would say like, you know, I always they say 90, 90 percent. I would agree to that, 
I think it's a lot of our people. But you know, every time we, you know, if I can ask them for information, they know what we're looking for. And they give us the documentation. And I'm not going to sit there, you know, take attendance. I think that the, the safest thing to do is to require security and put somebody by the auditorium. And, and, and if you decide, you know, you want somebody, you know, to, um, you know, police the area as well, like outside, you want somebody because of traffic. I mean, traffic's going to be yeah, bad. Right. If we're going to have six to 800 people, we are going to have parking. And you said up to 1,000, right? I, I don't know exactly how many. I, six to 800, maybe more. I don't know. I don't know how big these things are. Well, that's the number we said for the Odyssey in Mind. Yeah. Well, the Odyssey in Mind is, it is police. The Odyssey in Mind is security as police. It's, and, and, we, and we make that as part of the stipulation of the group? You want to use our own or you want, you know, I don't know if we can mandate that we well, use I, I, outside police. I, I think the opportunity for our, our own, own internal yeah. people, like I agree with Lori, to, to, yeah. to give them all the time. You know, we have security guards that they are familiar with the building, know what to look for. I don't think a, I don't think that police officer is going to say don't stay in the car because our own security in house was hey you don't no, right they, I think you need the police more for the outside right, right. right. Is well, there I, food being brought in to like the auditorium no I'm not allowed to bring food into the auditorium no 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 right. but they were going to use food in the cafeteria right cafeteria they're going to eat so there'll be no food in the auditorium yeah. will they cook and that's where our security will come no they no the I, I don't the think kitchen? they turn the ovens on if they they turn the ovens on they have to have a cafeteria person there. Which I don't, I don't think they do. I think they bring their own food in. What's that, right? They bring their own food in. Right? Yeah, they've never, they've never used the kitchen in the U.S. They don't use the kitchen. They bring food in. Have they, they've been to the U.S.? Yes. yes. And how do they leave like, the facility when they're done, honestly? Honestly, we, we haven't had major problems. And any problem that we did have was minor and repaired, but then, you know. And they pay for it, too. They never. It never disputed a bill that we signed. Did you know. have a group of this size, a thousand people in your school? No, no the, the UES couldn't handle a group of this size. I, I, my concern is the volume of people that when they, that it's more potential for something to go wrong when you rent it to a hundred people. It's just and they a still different. understand the no open flame. Okay. Oh, are these the same people from the candle? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I, I mix them up. There's about three or four organizations. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah, this, is make fire fire. this is their celebration. This is their 25th celebration. I don't know what that means, but oh, wow. 25 years. 25 years. Oh, no. Their existence of this as an organization. As an organization. I mean, uh, I'll be very honest with you. My answer is no. Very simply because this is a facility that was constructed for the education of the students of Cyril. It's not an entertainment facility. It's as simple as that. But it's a public building, and that's where you have to watch. If you have disabled residents, Tom, I understand what you're saying. You know, the the issue here, Mike, is that, you know, it's not an entertainment facility. I, I okay? understand. We don't, we don't, it's I don't see building. any other groups coming to use the facility. Okay? Huge groups, you mean? Uh, uh, any, groups any, anybody, anybody, okay? Uh, if you want, they have a place in home, though, the Arts Center. All right. Check with the several senior citizens and see what they'll say. It's a public building, and, and you know, and then we have policies well, my, that say you can rent it out. My point is, my answer is no, and that's right. you that's have that right. I, say I, I get a vote too. What 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 do you guys want to do? Um, we have we a have policy that says we have to rent. No, we have a policy that no. says our facility is available to rent, and these are the rates that we charge. And we've been down this road before about being selective on who we allow to use the building. Right. Um, now, if we have a policy that says you're limited to the number of people you have in the building, then, then I'm, I'm all for that. But we don't have that. And I'm just concerned that you go down this road and they say, hey, you're not letting us use the facility. But did we ever have anyone of a thousand people ask us before? There should I be a limit. We ever done there, can there be a limit? We've had, we've had, I think several years ago, yeah, six, eight, nine, nine. Listen. several years ago, they made use, I'm not sure if it was this Listen, building this, or the middle school, there was another big anniversary. This is a public meeting. Yeah. We just discussed that we have Odyssey Mind. We said we have 800, 1,000 people here. So obviously the facility can accommodate that many people. So now we're saying we got 1,000 people. That's too many. I and say you got to be careful. That's all I'm saying. Right. I agree, Mike. And I also, I'll go back to Kevin and Phyllis, I mean, Kevin and Helen. Um, this isn't until June. I'd like to hear what they have to say. Okay, but I'd like to hear what the people here have to say. No, no, that's true. Yeah, me too. Well, you know, well, we have time. It's not like we have I know we don't have to make a decision, decision tonight, but I, I, I well, think the people here could have an opinion you, you, with two you, people you, missing. You don't, you, don't, you don't know these groups. They're already, 
you know, they want to know. I they, mean, want they, to know. Want to plan, they want to plan, they want to, and I don't blame them. I mean, this is a big celebration for them. And, and I, to compare it, I mean, I've been to Odyssey of the Mind events. I, I've judged at Odyssey of the Mind. You're talking major security at, at these events, major people um, everywhere policing them. There's uh, teachers everywhere. It's, 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 well, it's, it's their own home. Yeah, it's a different environment, environment than a thousand people coming. I mean, and that's definitely an educational I would well, say opportunity. Yeah, I, I don't know that I want to compare this to Odyssey. I line. think that the key is fills on what you're saying. You, you may limit. want to say that you you require some type of security, yeah. and it be not of of their uh, own individual, so that you have some some type of an outside group monitoring and overseeing that may have a better interest as our own security people. And you might have teachers that might be willing to do it, uh, custodians, maintenance, and to and. Enforce that they use our employees as the security, so that there's a sense of level of somebody watching the building that understands the building and knows the building. I, I can tell you the toughest thing that you're going to have is you have food in this building. It's controlling people going into the auditorium with food, and if it's at least people employed by the district, you stand probably a better chance of saying you're not allowed in here than if they're self-monitoring, where they may not be as uh, strict with it. I'm okay. I would say yes, but I would limit the amount of people, like a definite limit, like no more than 500. I, I don't know if you can do that. As Mike said, I don't know if your policy, and you can say that well, at this point in time when you have a building. What, what I'll do to Are make this... Are you like asking them to, what, they want to well, use the bottom floor? Wait a second. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to Joe tomorrow, hospital. I'm going to get more information. I'm going to tell them no matter what, they're going to have to have a minimum of two security people, no matter what. If they're not willing to obviously pay for the security, then they they're going to they deny. Since we them. have three security guards, I, I think we should go with the whole three of them. Well, let's see how many people. Like let's see, see how many people are coming. I want to find out definitively how many people you're putting on the application and what specific rooms. Right now, they say they're using all the rooms. Sometimes they put everything down and they don't use it. I want to know. They may never use the auditorium. They may say, you know what, we don't want the auditorium if it's going to be a hassle. Oh, and then we could just lock it. Then we just lock it up, and that's what I'm going to say. I say, look, our biggest concern, of uh, we have the gates to segregate right. the building, and we can segregate off the building. So if they start to say to me, no, we don't, you know, we we, you know, auditorium is our biggest issue. We don't want people in there because it's hard to control. People are going to have food. Best thing to do is don't use the auditorium. We won't charge you for that. You have this is a big enough cafeteria area where you can, you know, do do your thing here. So let's see what they have to say. I will send you out an email, probably before Thanksgiving. When we come back from the December meeting, they'll have all the information. Hopefully, we'll be able to make a quick decision and be done with it. Because we're going back and forth, back and forth, and we don't really have all the information. And as Ed knows, they may not use all the, all the facility. They, they open it up and they say, well, I might do this. No, no. Or let's find out exactly. And how many people? We, we, we could put things off limit, but at yeah. the same time, if they're willing to pay for it and they want it, it's kind of hard to stop them. But we could, yeah, in answer to your question, we could. Yeah. And I'd still like to know, like, or is it, is it mostly say all residents? Well, I can ask that question, and I'm going to tell you the answer. Yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, I don't... But I mean, they're going to put that in writing? Yeah, they usually do. I mean, but I have no way of tracking. I have to trust that they're being honest. Right, I have no way of tracking. And you definitely need to know how many people. Yeah, you know, I know that. And, and I want to know what exact rooms are they using. Okay. And tell them that security, say for every 250, every 300 people, you're going to need a security guard. Yeah, but I, we also need outside security. We're going to need some sort of traffic control. Well, let me find out. Let me, let me find out. They should the police also. I mean, yeah. Well, I can only say to them, look, this is what the board's looking to do. I don't want to be too prohibitive because we don't do that with other groups. But we've never I've had a group of this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I the mind is bringing in their own security. They have a lot of their own security they're because you have advisors right. and things of this nature. Right. You already have built-in security. Right. So the kids is only like ten kids with each advisor. Right. They're not doing traffic. They're not doing traffic. Yeah. They're right. Yeah, you got a lot of buses and stuff. Okay. So, okay. There was a question of, is everybody done with this Indian thing with yeah. Carmel? The um, Slover, we had discussed um, the preschool of Slover, and I know I had a conversation with um, a video about it, has there been a resolution? 
on what we're doing with preschool and about what the, the status, the current preschool, and how about well, like the status of the building right? and what the future. This thing, this thing. The current this thing. Like, what about the future? Because we discussed this thing bending what we get back from the demographic report. We're going to wait for the demographic report to give us a, a snapshot and their belief as to where growth is and, and uh, things of that nature before we do anything else at this point in time. Okay, but my, my concern was that our enrollment is showing zero and losing. Are, are we looking for the future to fix that to make sure? Right that now, the, we went online. The status is inactive. There, there are several drop-down boxes, and the status is inactive because we don't have any students on the rolls in that building, so we had to use inactive. It's not closed, it's strictly inactive at this point in time. Okay. Any other discussion by the board? Yes, Mr. Batka. Mr. D'Andrea, we had discussed earlier several meetings ago about the capital reserve account. Have you gotten any direction from the auditors and from the attorneys about the uh, one? Strictly through the auditors and we've been back and forth and we're getting clarification from the State Department, uh, which after they read the regs, they said yes, then they said no, then they said yes, and then they said, I need further investigation. So at this point in time, it, it, there is none. Uh, I can tell you my personal feeling from reading it is that when you look at anything to do with budgets, in order to dedicate money, you have to have voter approval and then subsequent board approval to spend those monies. And I think that's the, the greatest, the area that we have the auditors in the state of now having. When you read the statute, it's not directly indicating that, but I, I would feel safe to say that if we don't have voter approval and board and to spend that capital money, that we, we should stay on the conservative side and wait until there's an approval and a board approval before going ahead and taking money out of capital reserve and trying to use it uh, at this point in time. But the auditors are trying to get that clarification, and, and if they, he did send me an email I believe it was Friday, indicating that he did speak to someone and that they even agreed that they, they need to do further investigation because the statutes are not clear on that specific question. Well, the reason I ask is because we need a definite answer before February so that we can go I understand this. that, but if the auditors can't give me the answer, uh, they're the ones that are going to say yes or no and qualify or unqualify your audit report, and if I don't have their blessings, I'm going to say at this point in time, no, you don't spend that money because they're, they're the ones that are going to qualify or don't qualify your audit based on their feelings. So it might, it's best to get them to say yes because the last thing you want is an un, a qualified uh, opinion on your audit that you did something totally outside the realms of the statute. The ambiguous regulations you're talking about, is those state regulations? Yes. And the state the cannot interpret the state regulations? Uh, that's the email I had, the yes or no, and then he said, you know what, let me look further into it. I have to tell you, I, I've read them also, and, and, it's, and it's a back and forth, it really is. Uh, so you have to be careful. And, you, and the thing is, you're dealing with capital reserve, where it specifically states, in order to use the money, you need board approval, voter approval with an adopted budget. Then you read the next subsection, it talks about ways to use it, and it's vague as to if you have the authority to just use it. So that's where the ambiguity is coming in. And it has to be the auditor who does this, like a, a lawyer? Would that no. Again, happen? your lawyer could tell you whatever they want. The auditors come in and say, who gave me that opinion? That's a wrong opinion. So I'm going to go to the auditors because they're the ones that are going to say yes or no to the, to the spending of the money at the end result. Okay. okay um, one other thing I, we did discuss at the finance committee meeting, and just to get um, direction, it, it probably was the intent of I guess at the meeting that we would come back to the board with a, a two percent budget. Is, is that what the board's looking for? Two, since the cap is two percent, is that what the board's looking for from the finance committee? Do they want something lower? Do they want to come in higher? Does anybody uh, have a preference or? I don't think it should be one two percent. Okay, okay. All right. you can't come back more than two because well, we the state law doesn't allow it. Well, we could come to the board with more than two percent, and they could cut it. Um, it's just a matter of direction. Do you want the it pre-cut? No, I, I think you put in the budget what, what we think we need to have in the budget, okay. and then we sit there and we say what we got to do. I mean, okay. you know. So I guess the intent is we'll aim for 2% to bring to the board. Does that agree? Anybody have a problem? No. Okay. And well, then we'll go from there. Anything else for discussion? If not, I'll open it up to
to the public for any questions about any topic. yesterday and chastising the council for spending money needlessly and bonding money. Now I'm at the opposite with this board. I know it's budget time and what I'm looking for is to spend money on facilities and when you come up with your budget to look to repair the roofs and possibly even windows because if you don't, it's just like a house. You have, it just escalates and you have more problems. And then it's going to turn around and you're going to come back to the public for a referendum or so. And it's going to be more costly. It, I can't get over that we can't fix the field. When I look in town, you have a little league field and you have a big roof fields right behind the Borough Hall. Beautiful fields. And this high school, no matter what you do here, I've been coming to meetings for how many years, and it seems everything gets put on a back burner. We can't do this because of this. We can't do this because of that. And it seems like nothing gets done, especially in facilities. And I think that's very, very important. Today there was an editorial in the newspaper about how important it is to fix the schools. That is just important as learning, to give a child a safe environment. If you have a leaky roof, eventually it's gonna go into the walls, you're gonna end up with a mold problem, and that's really gonna be a major problem. But here, it just goes on and on. So who's ever on your finance committee, who's ever doing the budget, preparing the budget, I hope you put paper for the teachers and not expect the teacher to buy their own paper and also to fix the roofs and fix the buildings. Maintain them. It's an investment. Me as a taxpayer, that's my investment here. Another subject I sat and listened to was this cafeteria problem. Three years ago, at least, I sat and listened to the auditor, and we were between eighty and ninety thousand dollars in the red, and we operated for several years in the red. So it, the money had to come from somewhere. So it came probably from not fixing the roof or not buying paper for the cafeteria. I couldn't get over it. Now it's operating fine. You have money, and want to spend it all. You, like you said, it's self-sustaining. But what happened to the money that we lost those several years? Do they pay it back to us? There was only one year of loss and they made it up in the 2010-11 year. They made it up for themselves for 2011. Several years ago, Tony Zatsky retired. And I remember Carla Southern telling me that it was the state law required that you had to have, she was a manager or whatever. She was replaced with three people. Has our population exploded that you have to have so many that you're hiring substitutes or to manage? I know the cafeteria expanded here, but it just seems to be more people. I mean, the, the menu answer, hasn't improved, but it seems to be something's wrong with this cafeteria we The answer the is yes, because we were now required to provide a breakfast program. So yes, the program has, has increased. The, uh, there's something wrong either with management or whatever, but there definitely seems to prob be a problem with cafeteria that keeps coming up for how many years. Another thing, years ago, when you had a, like a principal out, and this was in the high school, this was in the middle school, 
a manager stepped up, a vice principal stepped up to replace them. Now I spoke to former principals and all, and they always had the vice principal or whomever fill in. And they have, you have department heads all over the place, yet when someone's out, a principal out, you have to go to get a substitute, an outsider, and pay additional cost. And what is it, $500 a day? Uh, I'm not sure. Two thirds. What is it? How much? 230? 230 a day. And it's not always done, it's done maybe 50% of the time. Oh, it's not done all the time. Done 50% of the time. I know Mr. Gentile covered for two um, principals, I believe it was last Monday and Tuesday. And sometimes we just, you have too many people out, you know, people get sick. But then we had, had Mr. Skaronsky come in, I mean, nothing against that, but for. Yeah, Mr. Skaronsky comes in for $230 a day. Um, we have um, certain mathematics um, and science substitutes for teachers getting 200 so that there's not 500, it's not close to that, it's, it's too big. Well, if it's short term, it's short term. I think you should use someone to put in. We try to, if we can. <laughs> we try to. We use about 50% of the time, I would say. In the big um, buildings. We we, in the big buildings, we don't. Okay. You're talking the SUE, it's really predominantly done in the elementary schools because it's only one, it's only one person. In the big buildings, we don't replace anybody. Well, getting back to the budget, who's ever working on it, I hope you do include to maintain and look for a big portion on facilities. Thank you. Mr. Skilcombs, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? I, I just want to address one thing. I have permission from a lovely president to address so on concerns. I know last week you came up and you lectured us, too, about the facilities. Now I'm sitting here saying, what are you talking about? And let me explain. Um, since Mr. Pantoliano has been here, and since the good Mr. Bishada has taken leadership of the buildings and grounds, you are looking at the board that has put more into these facilities and done more in capital improvements than in recent memory, probably since you can remember, since the days of Joe Bell and, the, and that crowd on the board. Um, offhand, I don't know how many millions of dollars, when the, when the stimulus money came, the $4 million we put into capital improvements, we I can tell you in the 10 years I've been here, We've probably done about 130 to 140 million dollars in improvements. Thank you. You're fine, me, sir. Improvements is that without referendum? <coughs> no. Just recently, since I've been on the board, Mr. Kilcomins, since I've been on the board, and Mr. Bashada, correct me if I'm wrong. You can speak up any time to defend the Buildings and Grounds Committee because Excuse me. we replace. Well, 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 Mr. D'Andrea, did that include this 50 million dollars? Yeah, it includes the building. Okay. We, we, we replace unit ventilators in how many schools? We replace boilers. We replace uh, all the exterior doors. I know um, you did a lot of work. I, I, I know, but you keep telling us that we're not Well, the money. only thing that's still coming. Thing. You spoke for about 10 minutes. I okay. interrupt you all, so now I want to respond. No, I didn't. Well. Yeah, you did. You have a whole bunch of fields and paper and the menu and principal replacements and budgets. Okay, and so go on. ahead. I'm just going to address the fill the updates because I want to go home too. But we have made it a point to go through every one of these buildings and repair it. You sit up here, and if you're, you know, the first time, if you're here from the public for meeting, you would think that this board just neglects things. We let the roofs leak on children. We don't provide a safe environment for children. Well, they do. Middle school, I speak to the uh, teachers. Uh, they got buckets. They have to put plastic over the okay. computers. Well, uh, we spent $1.5 million on I, I know. I, I know we did. And you also know, because I know you go to council meetings, and I applaud you for giving them a hard time. Um, that every time a budget failed, in the, every time a budget failed in the past, this is coming, you know the first thing that they said was capital improvement money, cut this out, don't do that, don't do this, and don't do that. And Mr. Prashad has been very vocal about facilities, he's very knowledgeable about facilities, and we've identified those things, and as every time we have extra money, and he just asked today about the capital uh, budget reserves. So we've been very, very, uh, you know, proactive, and built, a good word. Diligent and doing these things, but you come up here and you, you're lecturing us about it. You don't take care of this, you don't take no, care of that. No, because you know why? Let you me know, just wait. <coughs> that's what you did. It's on tape. I'll, I'll I, I don't care. I listened to Mr. Uh, Sia talk. He said he wanted a three year study for some type of expenditure. Like, what are we going to do? Three years? You talked about the sidewalks in front of the middle school, it had to be repaired. 
well, we don't know if we repair it then, if we have the money, if we're going to do it. What happens? The teacher falls and breaks an ankle. But here it needed that. But it went around and around. I sat at this meeting and listened to them. And, oh, I don't know if we could. We have to get an outside. We have to get a safety. We have to get a, uh, an, um, an engineer. We have to look for an architect. For what? For a sidewalk and curbs to be replaced? You and I will agree with this. And let me just one more thing, because I know people... And then the other, the other point was, I listened. 160000 was spent on a security system. How great it is to be advanced. So sometimes it's your priorities, what's important. The ball field, the uh, security to get into that, or the roof to be repaired, or that sidewalk to be repaired. Yes. And, and the fields, just let me say something about the fields. Um, that hill in the back of that school has caused more problems with drainage. And I think it's going to be beyond our control to do anything about that. We um, have problems with the football. Uh, that's due to that, 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 that water coming down for that hill, and there's not a lot we can do about the geology there. I mean, a lot of that property may not even be bought property that borders that. Um, the issue is, if you can't compare, compare that field that has that issue, with the Little League field, where there is no you know, issues, uh, the topography is different and, and everything, but we're going to make an effort to do this, and, and I agree with you on that. Well, I hope you do. And, and I know we can count on your support of, of next year's budget when we, when we put this in. Well, you have to a 2% cap, facility. so. And, and Ms. Cummins, you go to those council meetings, and you, you let them have it. As a taxpayer, this is um, And leave you alone. And you have a lovely night. Thank you, madam. <laughs> Mrs. Cummins. Hi, Mrs. Cummins. You know, my name's Sorry. been mentioned about buildings and grounds. Uh, we could probably spend $10, $12 million just in one year of improving facilities. But you know it is, we're limited sometimes to how much we can spend. You know, I, I'd love to spend not every dollar that we could, but, you know, we're limited. That's why I asked about this 1.2 that we have in a capital reserve account, if we could use it. For doing a roof next year that we appropriated seven hundred fifty thousand dollars for at the middle school, which is one of the facilities you're talking about, if we had the extra one point two. We could probably do all the roof areas that have to be repaired and continue with univentilators there. We need univentilators in our lift and windows. We need issues with Truman. Um, you know, Wilson's almost completely rebuilt, you know, but there are issues that. Well, maybe someone should contact the head of the Department of Education in the state and not rely on the auditors to find out if we can do that. Thank you, Madam. Before I continue with the public portion, um, Mrs. Cook, I'm going to remind you of something. Um, I spoke to Dr. Alfano today. I, I was at the council meeting and our Truman situation with the playground and the lease. Um, it didn't go over very well last night at the council meeting. It probably had six people, three had concerns. So before we move forward and hire an attorney to do this, I, I, I don't already sure. have an email from Mr. Betran saying that they're, they're interested in moving forward. They are, mm -hmm. and, and he's going to guarantee that because it was it just right. sort of... Um, he put it in right. He did. He, it was, he responded saying they're okay. interested in moving forward. It, it wasn't... I didn't walk away with a warm and fuzzy that it was moving forward. So he followed I, through on what you asked, and he did reconfirm it. Okay, that's that's fine. I, I just wanted to make sure. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay, yeah. wait. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to ask: when you guys did the surveying of the land, was there anybody from Buildings and Grounds that was committing? It was an outside it? engineer that came in to do it. Right, that was with Dennis and. Yeah, Dennis. And Dennis Sawyer. Land Associates are. Uh, our uh, architects and engineers do that, and they they went out and did the the, the survey of it. Right. Were you uh, there, or was I there? No, I believe they did it on a, a Thursday that I wasn't here. But no, no, Dennis would have handled it, and we wouldn't have invited any board members. No. Okay. No. So the Buildings and Grounds Committee doesn't get involved in that at all. Or? No. No. Well, you said it was you and J.K. and someone else that came in. So that. Very simply, was the gentleman that when we met at one time. Right. Was anybody from Buildings and Grounds there at all? I like that know. would be us. I don't. Not that I recall. No. Right. Would we be invited to anything like that? Or to I don't see. I personally don't see a, a need to have the buildings and grounds committee meet when we do these things. We we have your direction. We are following through on it. I mean, it's your fault. I mean. What do you feel? Huh? I wasn't invited. Would you have liked to have gone? 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it was like an invitation thing. I, I we got the wrench and we did what you asked. We, we went out, we met with the guy. We, I mean, if you want me to invite the committee to every time I go no, out not, and meet with a vendor, well, I mean, uh, I'll be more than happy to invite you guys. <laughs> I mean, no, Dennis, so Dennis meets with people four or five times a day. Was that yeah. The ball ground was like a, I mean, it was, the ball field was a very heated issue. Yes, and we're, and we're on top of it. it. It doesn't seem to be that way. I mean, honestly, we're it seems doing, like it's going to be solved. The it's board authorized us to work with a professional who, who has worked on the Somerset Patriots field. He came out, and the first thing he looked, he says, you have elevation issues. Don't fix the infield until you look at your outfield. It was his recommendation to go and get the soil sample done, his recommendation to get the survey and the topography or whatever it's called done. We followed through on his recommendations on to what he feels is your first standard to understand what is necessary to fix a field. Right. We had the soil survey come back, and once they came back, he said, now you need to send it to this company to let them determine what kind of mix you can to get to the right plane. So, we're following up on the recommendations of someone who's knowledgeable in this. We aren't knowledgeable in this, so, I mean, I we've done said. every part that we've been told to do. We're moving ahead, and, and when I have someone tell me who's knowledgeable in this, where I am not, and Dennis's understanding of it, to say, don't move forward with an infield repair until you look and know what's happening in your outfield, I have to rely on that person if he's once I'm ran the saying, Somerset Patriots, I'm not saying that he's not a media. Yeah. I see what you're doing. It's, Lord, I'm not it's, doing anything yeah. but following the recommendations Whatever. of people who know what to do. It's stalling. Well, what, 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 what are we? What, are we what would you like I'm, me to do? I don't understand. I'm not out there. Mid, mid, Dennis is dealing with them, with this guy Ray Sipperly and J.K. I'm not even stalling anything. You like I'm not that. Thank you. Field. I'm not an expert, but I can tell you if the elevation has been shot to that entire field, we do have a problem out there. And if we go ahead and repair the infield, we're throwing our money right out that door. I didn't say to repair the infield. What I'm saying is you didn't know that that outfield was that bad before this. You, you can't, you, you you can't have a really, lot of experience, but you're saying you don't know No, you can't really determine that until you get an elevation shot. But you can't see that with your own... You, no. You build a lot of fields, but you can't see that. You can't. You can't. You're talking 300 feet, 400 feet. You can't see that. No, you can't. So it's not yeah. being flooded now? Or? No, it's flooded. You can walk out there right now. That that right field is completely flooded. Okay, so we needed somebody that was a specialist to tell us that? Or? No, no. We knew it was flooded. Okay. We, didn't know, we didn't know the severity of it. We didn't know the severity of it. My recommendation to the board is to hire an architect, get a full-blown scale, Scope of work and go out to bid for it because you are definitely going to be over your threshold. Well, that's there. What, what type of time frame are, are we looking at here? Did, did um, you shed some light? Uh, I, I really can't answer that, Phyllis. I really can't. But that's the right way to go with this. Because if you spend a nickel on that infield, according to our expert, our consultant, you're throwing your money right out the door. You can, if you spend $20 on that field, you're throwing it out the On the infield, you're throwing it out the door. Because within two years, or depending, how much rain you're getting, that infield will wash right away. Okay, and this uh, consultant, he's not the one to write the specs, or he, he is not qualified to write. <laughs> he is not qualified. Phyllis is not qualified at all. Um, af after we got the elevations, the grid of that field, you can actually see, as Mr. Daniel said, between first base and third base. You can't see. You go out there. You can't see. There's about a foot and a half difference between first base and third base. But you see that already. I don't know if it's a foot and a half, but the, the survey tells you it would be a foot and a half, approximately a foot and a half. Explain, when you talk about survey, you're talking about the what, issues what they that you use to actually take Exactly, you exactly. Tram. You can't see it with the naked eye. You cannot. You cannot. That's it's a, explain a tram. That's what you can use. Yeah, well, what they do is, I made them shot it, shoot the entire field every 10 feet, which is overkill, okay? And it shows you everything. Everything. The right field, the center field, first base, the infield, even the dugouts. They have to be. You can take a look at the, the, the dugout, the dugout below grade. That all has to be repaired. All has to be repaired. My suggestion, 
hire an architect, firm, with a consultant, because if you go with an architect, they're going to give you out of the can specifications. This field needs TLC. In order to do it right, that's what you have to do. So are we at that stage now to do this? Or um, are we, what are we waiting for then, if that's your recommendation? Is that something we should be talking about tonight? That, that should be on the table. Yes. Should. Yes, it should be on the table. Okay, so we're not actually waiting for anything. Um, actually, what I did with Mr. With, with, with the consultant, I asked him to put it in writing, his recommendation. He said he'll get it in a couple of days. I haven't heard it yet. I haven't seen it yet. And his recommendation is going to His be recommendation right. is for us to get an architect and an engineer to go out to bid because we're definitely over our threshold. Okay. So how long is it going to be? Um, I spoke with him. Um, I actually emailed. We go back and forth emails, and I can show you the emails. Um, I think it was Friday night. Oh, no, Wednesday night. I'm sorry. Wednesday night. Wednesday night was my last conversation with him, and I told him I'll speak to him on Monday, and I called him up on Monday. We had a lengthy conversation, and that was his recommendation. And that's your recommendation? That's definitely my recommendation. So we have to go forward with that now? That's where you think the next step is right now. That would be the next step. That would be the next step. If, if, if you want to get this field done, if you want to do just the infield, okay, well, you, you can. We shouldn't do that. If you just want to do the infield, you can do that, but you'll be throwing your money away. The right way to do this is do the infield with the outfield. Because you definitely have a problem in the outfield. The reason why that infield is the way it is is because of that infield, the outfield. Yes. If, if you want to do it the correct way, if you want to do it the correct way, that's the way to do it. So we would need to authorize an architect? I'd like to get the report from this gentleman so that we can make that, sure that what we move forward with is the exact thing. Yeah, but that's correct. Right. And that's fine. But the thing is, we... And I'll get the proposal. Once we have it, we'll go to Lane Associates. I already have we'll done that. They'll give us a cross proposal to do it. Okay, but I guess, right, my concern here is we're not going to see each other for another four weeks, and if this is the recommendation that we need an architect to build bid specs, then maybe we need to act on that tonight and say if we need it, we should approve it. I don't have a cost it. proposal for you to approve, that's the problem. Yeah. Our cost proposal for who? So architect and <coughs> land associates. And, so and we we're, don't have to we're assuming this. right now land associates are the right people to do this. Okay, so we're so going we're to ask sure land associates to do a bid spec. Is that what we're saying? Uh, if, if the board chose to use land associates for the architect, but they are the architect of records, I would suggest that, along with with Mr. this consultant that we have. Because if we just go with it, if we just go with an architect, an engineering firm, they're gonna give us an open can uh, spec out there. This Mr. Sipperly is very familiar with this field, spent a lot of time on this field, and knows what has to be done. In order to get this field right, I highly recommend that we get him on board as our consultant to get this field the way it should be, if we're serious about doing this. Okay, so my question is, does the board have to act to do anything well, as for this, you to do that? Yes, I have to get a proposal from Land Associates, assuming Land Associates would take it on. I mean, we're assuming that Land Associates is willing, is the right person. When speaking with Mr. Ray Sipperly, he may say, I know an engineer that specializes in field renovation or baseball field renovation. And that may be a conversation that Dennis and I need to have with that person that says, what makes you better than Land Associates? We don't know those answers. Those are the things that we're, as we move forward and we get more information, it's becoming an education to us also that we need to do more than what we thought was just take out play and lay down right. stuff. And, and I understand all and that. I guess my question is I don't want to put this into a position where we could get this answer in two days and we're not going to meet for four weeks. If I have that, I'll send it. Once I have it, I'll get it to you. I don't know that at this point. Because we're not there, we're not at that point. Because we're still waiting on this report. And how long before you get this report? The report from our consultant. I'm hoping by the end of this week. Okay. So. I'm hoping. I asked him on Monday to get me something in writing, what he's recommending. And he, right now, verbally, he recommended to me to get an engineer to go build the specs and to go out to bid. I asked him if he knew someone. 
He says he did. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I guess where I'd like to leave it is could you notify um, the building and grounds? Absolutely. Uh, um, Mr. Mr. Shana, will you follow up with this? Yes, I will. Yeah, there's, okay. two, there's two things that, one, that are starting to irritate me point blank. One is, will the steel be ready for baseball? Or two, will the field be safe for baseball and where will our team play at? These are answers that we're going to have to come up with for, for March. Well, that's people are asking me the question. That's why, even though I'm annoying you a little bit, I'm sorry. I well, like to we, answer. To no, you get annoyed, and I can see it, and I'm sorry, but I have to answer no. to my residents. And, and I yeah. understand, too, They're but important. I can take exception because Mr. Yeah. DeAndre and I have been working right. very diligently on this project. We haven't stopped on it. Since it's been dropped in my lap, yeah. since it's been dropped in my lap and it freshly has been, right. I've been working very hard on this project, and I want to get what's right for this district. Right. Not only for this district, for these kids, because they deserve it. I agree. Yep. No argument. Yes, if we get yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't want to hold this up for four weeks if we and get an answer in three days. And neither do I. I already asked Land Associates to, to make, give me a proposal on cost. And he estimated cost on what it cost to do this year. Thank you. I already did. Thank you. Okay. Is anyone from else from the public wish to speak on any any topics at all? Okay. Not motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.